will just uh, uh, introduce uh, Ellen, actually, uh, but uh, I, will sh I will say just a few words about uh, short-term uh, scientific missions uh, uh, in general. With this uh, uh, presentation, we uh, tried uh, to collect uh, all uh, 17 that we have. Uh, so, uh, you know from our Vademecum, short-term scientific missions are uh, actually institutional visits. Uh, the point is uh, to uh, foster collaboration and of course they need to be in the scope of the uh, complete cost uh, uh, activity. Of course, as each uh, uh, cost uh, tool, they are also promoting gender balance, uh, enable early career investigators and uh, broadening geographical inclusiveness. I think that we uh, manage this uh, with uh, those uh, 17 that we have. So a um, few more are also under uh, preparation and uh, some of them started already. So you can see that um, uh, 18 different uh, countries were involved, uh, Switzerland, Macedonia, Portugal, Italy, Denmark, Norway, etc. Uh, you will see also from the overview that uh, for sure more than 15 conference and journal papers were published uh, based uh, on uh, short missions. And uh, you will see also that they were basis for uh, case studies uh, that were uh, developed uh, for further development of scientific methodologies and uh, some of them uh, are also uh, the input for uh, practical uh, guidelines. Uh, we tried uh, to compose this uh, presentation as a kind of uh, compilation of uh, uh, two slides uh, per, uh, per each uh, uh, mission. Uh, you will see uh, who was the scholar, the STSM participant, uh, uh, from where he uh, went, what is his uh, home or her home institution who was the host and uh, why uh, he chose this host, what was uh, uh, the general aim of the mission, uh, what were the methods and tools used before for the preparation and uh, during the uh, mission, uh, what were the main uh, results, uh, of course, uh, within the uh, uh, cost action scope, uh, results uh, uh, contain also uh, the data on uh, scientific publications uh, and uh, uh, what is, uh, uh, I believe, the most important, uh, outreach, uh, what, uh, what can we expect as a future developments and uh, uh, is there a potential to exploit uh, what they've, uh, they've done uh, through their missions. And of course there is uh, always a uh, semi-federal uh, uh, schematic representation so you can uh, uh, you can, like, let's say, uh, get a better uh, perspective. Uh, there are also, uh, besides this presentation, uh, we asked them all, all to make uh, posters. The posters were actually going, uh, uh, the presentation of posters uh, was going uh, in the morning, and uh, I suppose everything will be available on the website uh, after the, uh, after the uh, finish of the action. Now, Ellen, will you please go through? Those 17. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Great. Okay, thanks, Anna. Um, so uh, I'm going to look through a flavour of the STSMs which we promoted during the course of the action. Um, right from the outset, we tried to identify and select and promote STSMs which had. Uh, good impacts in terms of the various uh, work packages, and I hope you'll you'll see that in the context of the ones uh, which we present today. Um, they they've contributed to a lot of work which has been done. They've also contributed to a number of objectives that held are outlined in terms of the uh, innovation potential. Um, we specifically looked when we when we were considering uh, SDSM proposals at innovation potential at exploitation potential, and that became a a determinant in some cases of whether or not uh, the STSMs were approved for funding. So we had 17 in all uh, completed and we have four uh, currently uh, at various stages. Um, so just to give you a flavour of, of what some of these look like, these, these are not necessarily in uh, a consecutive order here of how they occurred. Um, these are the uh, slides which were produced by the scholars, so we would acknowledge them and thank them for the 
uh, the slides as they stand here. I don't propose to read everything that's on all of these to you. Uh, rather, what I think is important to look at is, is just to get a flavour for where people came from, where they went to, to show the, the geographic spread of the scholars as they moved around uh, the various uh, locations, to look at what their aims were, and then maybe a little bit on the results and uh, some of the uh, outputs. So the first one here was Maria Giovanni Maciota, who went from uh, Italy to Portugal. Uh, the title of the SGSM was The Value of SHM for the Structural Behaviour of Masonry Structures Under Varying Environmental Effects. Uh, and the aim here was to uh, shed light on how information collected through monitoring systems can be exploited uh, for assessing the structural performance of masonry historical buildings under varying em environmental conditions, making more effective asset management decisions. So this was a very interesting uh, uh, SGSM which occurred very early uh, in the project. Uh, the outreach activities which occurred here were focused on development of SHM based forecasting models for heritage structures in order to predict uh, ageing effects. And as with all the other SCSMs, the final reports, which are very interesting and are very detailed, uh, are available uh, on the website uh, for your uh, information. Uh, the second one here was Simona, uh, who went from Macedonia to Eleni uh, in Switzerland. Uh, unfortunately, that's the information which we have to present to you, so you'll have to refer to the, the document on the website for more information on that. This project looked at a novel bicomponent SHM strategy for deriving global models uh, of operational wind turbines. So you can see, and I'll sum up at the end, the variety of different structural forms and types which were considered during the course of the project. Uh, the third uh, one which we're going to look at was the application of bridgeway in motion measurements in the assessment of existing structures. And this were, was where Dominic went to Alesh, who's also here today in the audience, from uh, Croatia to Slovenia. The aim here was to study and analyse the application of bridgeway in motion measurements as a part of SHM tools in load carrying capacity assessment uh, of existing road bridges. Um, a number of publications, as with a lot of the STSMs, there was a significant number of publications which resulted from the work, which was uh, very encouraging. Um, and the, the uh, outreach here, or outcomes here, uh, were based on case study developments. So you've seen the case study in this uh, consequence. This was the subject of a number of, of two SDSMs, actually, this particular work. Uh, and so it fed from one into the other into a case study, which was particularly pleasing. Um, the third uh, value of information, or sorry, the fourth value of information in system resilience modeling was where Simona went from the Technical University of Denmark to uh, Mark Stewart, who was one of our uh, external advisors uh, in Australia. Uh, and the application here was in both. It, it covered a couple of work packages here, so uh, from, from number one to number four, looking at the application of value of information to system resilience modelling and to demonstrate how the value of information can be applied in a broader sense to different monitoring strategies. So already, I hope, you're getting a flavour for the very extensive range of work that was done in the STSMs, different structural forms, different considerations, um, different impacts to the various work packages which we had. Um, here, the outreach was where the value of information analysis was used as a decision support tool in evaluating monitoring policies uh, over different indicators and scenarios. Uh, again, these slides will all be made available to you subsequently so you can peruse these uh, at your leisure. Uh, then we had, uh, this was one of my, or my SCSM was looking at meta models in, in structural health monitoring. And this was where Peter El Hadj, who was actually based at the University of Nantes at the time, came to us in Trinity to look at uh, investigating the use of degradation meta models uh, based on the formulation of cor correlated state dependent stochastic processes in a structural health monitoring context. And an interesting point here about Peter is that Peter's email address is now in Mont McDonald. And Peter, I was with Peter in a meeting last week in London, and Peter's now based in the uh, asset management group in Mont McDonald and is actively encouraging the use of value of information with their clients towards the management of the infrastructure which they have. So that's a great result in the context, Helder, you suggested about the PhD students going out into industry and, and some of the comments we had about education. Peter's actually living, living the dream now uh, in, in, in Mont McDonald. Uh, in, in applying the, the, the work which he did. Um, so we looked at uh, looking degradation models uh, in a structural health monitoring context. We looked at uh, reconstructing data sets where data was, miss was missing and so on. And, and I'm, uh, I'm glad to say that, that the meeting I had in London with Peter last week was exactly about this, working with Highways England to see how they could reconstruct uh, uh, data sets. So, sorry, enough about me. 
Um, strategies and structural thermal monitoring, monitoring condition assessment with thermal monitoring of earth dams and levees. So this was where Christoph uh, went to Irstea in France, um, looking at the preparation of optimal strategies of structural health, thermal monitoring and condition assessment with thermal monitoring of earth dams and levees. So we've, we've had bridges, we've had wind turbines, we've had earth dams, we've had meta models, we've had uh, so on at this stage. Um, the next one, structural health monitoring for large structural systems. This was one of two uh, STSMs by Professor Lyra, where uh, in this one went to the, the Danish Technical University to look at the potential for application of enhanced Monte Carlo simulation methods for large structural systems within the area of structural health monitoring. Resulted in a number of publications and, uh, and some significant uh, outreach activities. Uh, models for structural health monitoring of concrete structures under fatigue loads, considering material and structural uncertainties, was where uh, Luis Sacedo Mora went from uh, uh, Spain to Sebastian in, in Denmark, looking at risk modeling of fatigue damage of concrete to develop a probabilistic modeling uh, with a pre posterior and prior decision models. Uh, uh, and a number of scientific papers are under production uh, in that case. Uh, number nine, development of a digital image correlation technique as an indicator of structural uh, integrity. Again, uh, Luis uh, Sacedo Mora went this time to LNEC in Portugal. Um, and here uh, they, they looked at extending the model uh, towards a more global application, this digital image correlation technique. Uh, proof load testing decision framework, uh, where uh, Henning Busk went from the Technical University of Denmark to Dimitri uh, in Edinburgh, looking at the development of a decision support framework of proof load testing, um, and here uh, potential follow-up and research considering hybrid simulation. So another important aspect of the STSMs is that it encourages first further collaboration or future collaboration between the scholars and their host institutes. Uh, an SDSM by our glorious leader, Sebastian, uh, to Mark Stewart in Australia, looking at assessment of risk mitigation strategies for attacks on bridges. This is a really interesting one because this was looking at a different uh, hazard scenario, so looking at te terrorist attacks with improvised explosive devices for an iconic bridge structure. Um, so again, you can see the kind of range and the broad scope of the application of the methodologies here. Um, the outreach activities here were identification of efficient strategies for a safer built environment uh, with uh, less resources. Uh, structural health monitoring of a tendon supported large span roof in the multi arena in Poland. Again, this contributed, as you've seen, to some case study work. Uh, Thomas Hoizaki uh, went to Miroslav Sikora at the Czech University in Prague, uh, looking at reliability and risk analysis involving FE modeling uh, and in situ data, uh, considering a real multi arena case study. Uh, uh, and the outreach activities here were managing procedure for uh, the multi-arena and calculation scheme for uh, similar case studies. Um, Dominic's uh, second STSM then, implementation of a value of information analysis with probabilistic assessment methods of existing bridges from the University of Zagreb to the Technical University of Denmark. And you've seen some presentation on this work uh, already today, uh, looking at implementing the value of information analysis to quantify costs and benefits of the application of bridge way and way in motion measurements in the assessment of existing road bridges. Um, and significant, obviously, you've seen this presented today, the kind of outreach activities which have resulted from this work. 14, uh, getting there. Uh, implementation of the value of information analysis with probabilistic assessment methods of existing uh, timber hall. Um, Mislav Stepanak went to Daniel uh, Hunphy, who I nearly didn't recognize when I saw him earlier on today. Um, uh, looking here at uh, how a pre posterior decision analysis can help to quantify the value of information obtained by the condition assessment of timber structures uh, and the outreach activities. Uh, and this is a really interesting one, seeing where the results of the, this SDSM could have implication uh, in the assessment of, of timber structures. Uh, number 15, uh, so Helder had a number of SDSMs, so this is the first of Helder's uh, SDSMs. Development of a novel proactive SHM tool devoted to bridge maintenance based on damage identification by FE analysis and probabilistic methods, looking at the Lezeria bridge. Uh, and this was uh, a link between a very uh, valuable and very um, uh, beneficial link between Helder and TNO Vim, who's here in the audience today, looking at uh, applying the value of information to pre stressed concrete bridges supported by the test bed with extensive field data available. So this was a huge. Uh, benefit of Helder's STSMs that we had a significant amount of data already available which we could use uh, in the context of this bridge. 
um, and and very interesting to see how the results of the STM can be actually used in a real life structure uh, applying on the Lazeria Bridge. Um, Number 16, the value of information uh, in seismic emergency management of bridges, uh, Pier Francesco Giordano uh, going to Simona at Alborg University, uh, looking at visual inspections in the context of emergency management of a motorway bridge under seismic hazard. And again, the outreach activities here uh, look at the, the global characterization, dynamic characterization uh, of the structure. Uh, and 17, one of the ones which is currently underway by Jorge, uh, who's visiting Daniel uh, in, in um, Munich uh, is looking at sequential decision framework for design decisions including life cycle considerations. Uh, so this is uh, developing the mathematical framework, looking at the operation and maintenance decisions and reflecting these in design. So I hope that uh, you've got a, a, a good feel for the kind, of, the kind of range of activities which were conducted in the various STSMs uh, uh, over the lifespan of the project. I think we were very successful in the number of SGSMs which we promoted. I think uh, we were successful in terms of the interactions between research institutes, as Heller showed in one of his slides, between research institutes and universities and, and between industry and universities. I think if you consider uh, under five headings here, the types of structures which we considered. So we've looked at masonry structures, we've looked at bridges, we've looked at wind turbines, we've looked at dams, we've looked at large span roofs, we've looked at timber halls the like kinds of loads that we've considered, so environmental effects, chloride attacks, so degradation mechanisms, traffic loading, uh, fatigue loading, terrorist attack, and seismic hazard. If you consider the different inspection and monitoring methods which have been considered by the, S by the, the scholars, looking at uh, visual inspection based contingent assessment, looking at digital image correlation techniques, looking at proof load testing, looking at bridge whim, looking at thermal mon monitoring the types of tools and methods that have been developed, so system resistance mod resilience modeling, structural behavioral modeling, uh, structural health monitoring strategies, degradation meta models. I'm getting tired reading it, so you must be getting tired hearing it at this stage, how, how extensive we've been in the work that we've done. Uh, risk mitigation measures, uh, considering material, structural, and load uncertainties. And finally, uh, quantifying costs and benefits and decision making within asset management frameworks from the perspective of emergency management and life cycle management of structures in general. I'd like to congratulate all the uh, STSM scholars on the, on the work which they did, which I think you'll agree is really extensive in the, co in the uh, context of the action. I think it's been very successful, the amount of STSMs we've had. I think the work that they've done has been really successful. The outreach activities have been great. The rate of publication has been phenomenal and the potential for future collaboration and for these scholars to really push the boat out in this space uh, in their professional uh, careers, I think, uh, is also evident, and I hope that's evident to you too. So with that, I'll conclude. Thank you very much, Ellen. <laughs> Any questions to Ellen? Yes, Hilda. Well, it's not a question, but it's <laughs> it's a well, it's a question, but it's mainly a challenge. Uh, the innovation committee is still working. Yes, it didn't finish yet. Yeah. So, what do you think about, for example, from what you receive? Because I have a short scientific mission, so we submitted a report. So, what do you think about in producing a, <clears throat> a small publication and all these short scientific missions, uh, or thinking about it? To, as you presented in these last slides, it's very nice when you see by categories of uh, what do you think about it? We could produce this uh, yeah, compiling briefly and could be a starting point for uh, what I suggested in the book on TU1402. Just a remark. Are you trying to draw me into writing a chapter in your book? <laughs> is, that, is that the real question? Uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a fantastic idea. I mean, I think it's it's... It's apparent to everyone how extensive the work that's been performed is. Um, it's been hugely successful in that regard. Um, the, 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 the range of applications, of possible applications, the demonstration of the po po possible applications, the, the myriad of possibilities that that creates in your mind uh, for future work, I think that it's a, it's a fantastic idea. Uh, I'll talk to Anna about it and we'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> I know, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> 